We turn now to Kalispell, Montana, where an attack by a vandal has destroyed one of four facilities in the state that provided abortions. We have reached all families' health care. Our business is uh, no, no longer exists due to being destroyed by a hate crime. That was the voicemail message patients received after hours, starting early this month when they called their health care provider. Early on March 4th, a vandal systematically broke or slashed practically every object and surface inside all families' health care. He destroyed the building's plumbing and heating systems, pulled plants up by their roots, stabbed holes through faces and family photographs. In a letter to the local paper, owner Susan Cahill wrote, quote, This person took meticulous time destroying everything that was important to me. Later in the day, police received a report of another breaking at a local bail bond office. Nearby, they found 24-year-old Zachary Clunt. His shoe tread matched a print found at the health office. When he was arrested, Clunt was carrying a fully loaded pistol with a spare magazine in the holster. He faces arraignment today on four felony charges, including burglary and criminal mischief. Zachary Clunt is the son of Twyla Clunt, a board member of the anti-choice group Hope Pregnancy Ministries. She resigned following her son's arrest. The office that was destroyed on March 4th had just opened three weeks before the attack. That's because Susan Cahill had been forced to relocate after a new owner purchased the building that housed her former office. The executive director of Hope Pregnancy Ministries has now admitted to buying Susan Cahill's old building. In a statement to Democracy Now!, Michelle Reimer wrote, quote, We made a stand for the pro-life position in a legal, peaceful and non-confrontational way, purchasing the building in order to advance the cause of life, she wrote. It's not the first time Susan Cahill has faced attempts to stop her from providing abortions. Another clinic where she worked was firebombed in 1994. The following year, the Montana state legislature passed a measure known as the Susan Cahill Law to ban physicians' assistants from providing abortions. Susan Cahill was the only physician's assistant providing abortions in the state. The Montana Supreme Court eventually upheld her right to perform abortions, which she has been doing as part of family health care for 38 years. Susan Cahill joins us now from her home in Kalispell, Montana. We welcome you to Democracy Now!, Susan. Can you talk about what happened on March 4th? Well, um, early in the morning of March 4th, my receptionist came to work and uh, went in the back door and saw that the glass had been broken through and did smartly didn't go in, went upstairs to the landlord, who happens to be a lawyer, and said, We've been broken into. Please call 911. Then she called me. Um, and by the time I got there, the place was swarming with um, policemen and FBI, and they would not let us go in. And in fact, I couldn't go in till the next day in the afternoon, and they worked all night long. And I didn't know, you know, you don't know what to expect. You have no idea about this. And they just kept telling me that. You have to be prepared. There's a lot of damage. Um, and at one point, the head police officers asked me if I wanted to see some videos before I walked in, and I declined. I just was anxious. I wanted to go in and see for myself. So we just, that day, we just hung out in shock and waited. And the uh, when you got the news of the arrest of a suspect uh, uh, in the incident, could you talk about that and also who the suspect is? Well, um, it just fit a lot of little pieces, of course, together, because um, I found out Zachary Clunt, the, the uh, son of Twyla Clunt, who was one of the founders of Hope Pregnancy Ministries and who I have met about five years ago. I invited her for lunch, kind of to mend fences, talking about our different views. I went and uh, visited Hope Pregnancy Ministries. I invited her to visit my clinic, which she, she declined. Um, and so when I heard it was him, it didn't surprise me. And then I also found out what I suspected was, which was that Hope Ministries had bought my previous office. So 
I just put the pieces together. Didn't take too much work to do that. Susan Cahill, you describe um, what the vandal did. Uh, tell us about the shape of your offices. What did he destroy? What kind of um, weapons did he have? Um, I can only surmise what kind of weapons he had. And it's very hard for me to talk about my office because I get very emotional about it because it was awful. And um, only three weeks previously, I had, because I had moved, um, I had painted it. I had new cabinets. I had window coverings. I had friends come. We put up uh, artwork. It was really, really lovely. And I was very happy with how it looked. And so to see that whole thing destroyed, and I, I, I really can't tell you how much um, he... he he, he meticulously worked at breaking absolutely everything that you can imagine. I mean, I even had an award because I got an award um, as risk taker from Lifetime TV back in 2003. And it was this big, heavy glass award. And he smashed it to smithereens. And I, I suspect that it was a, a hammer. I don't know. He put um, claw, I think the end of a hammer claw marks into all the pictures, my personal family pictures. He broke the glass on absolutely everything that has had glass, whether it be cabinets or my, or my um, artwork. Um, he completely destroyed my ultrasound machine, of course. And, um, and then, and then there were just papers. The couches had big holes in them. The exam tables had holes in them. He, the, the blood pressure cuff was completely broken, bent, destroyed. Tools were completely bent. I mean, he took a lot of care to do all this damage. Family and then photos? There was, family photos were, were destroyed. I mean, they, I've kept them, but um, they have holes in them. The glass was broken out. I had a picture of me and my son framed because my son had written a very lovely to the new letter to the editor in 2003 when I came back from doing some work in upstate New York and um, I had framed it and um, he took, he put holes in both of our faces and destroyed the, the, the newspaper article that was framed. Well, Susan, we invited Michelle Reimer, the executive director of Hope uh, uh, Pregnancy Ministries, to join us on the program today, but she declined. Uh, she did issue a written statement, though. She confirmed the mother of the suspect in the attack on your uh, clinic served on the board of directors of Hope Pregnancy Ministries. Reimer said Twyla Klunt has since resigned, quote, in order to keep Hope Pregnancy Ministries from being unjustly accused or associated in any way with Zach's actions. She also wrote Hope Pregnancy Ministries was uh, shocked and saddened by the attack uh, on your clinic, calling it abhorrent and totally unacceptable manner by which to express opposition to abortion. Uh, your uh, reaction? Uh, well, of course she's going to say that. I mean, what is she? She's not going to say we're happy about it. I mean, that wouldn't be appropriate. But I think that she needs. They they need to take. Uh, they need to be accountable for what happened. I, I wrote a letter to the physician who I've known very well for 38 years, who is the physician for Hope Ministries, Pregnancy Ministries. And I said to him, you know, I'm a victim here, but so is Zachary Clunt, because babies are born in innocence and love, and they are taught to hate. And I think that that is where they have to be accountable. How was he caught, Zachary Clint? Not in your offices. And how long do you expect he uh, spent destroying your medical clinic? You know, it's a very good question. And a lot of people who, ha who saw the destruction keep saying, how could one person do so much damage? Um, so a lot of people think there's got to be more than one. I don't know. It's hard to grasp those things because when you can't imagine doing it yourself, I mean, you just can't imagine anybody doing something like that. So I think he must have had to spend a lot of time there. And I don't know what this other bond, you know, the bond, the bail bond place that he got into, what that was about. Um, you know, my my first thought is either he was set up to do that so that it looked like a random act. The other thought was that he was drunk with power over what he had just done and continued on. I don't know.
I wanted to ask you now, it's been decades now that you have been uh, 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 conducting your work in, amidst enormous hostility to the point where the, the, the legislature attempted to write a law specifically aimed at you. Could you talk about the toll it's taken on you and why you persist uh, so much in uh, maintaining uh, the uh, right to abortion for women? Because it's the right thing to do. That's why I have continued on. I mean, I grew up when abortion was illegal and became legal when I was a young woman. And as a young woman, it made total sense to me that women have to have this medical availability uh, safely. And when I went to PA school from 74 to 76, I was taught to do abortions during my schooling, which is doesn't happen anymore. But um, and then when I came out to Montana, the physician who was who was uh, working at the time, Dr. Armstrong, who was also from New York originally, had vowed because he saw women die every day when he was in medical school of illegal abortion. And um, he vowed that if it ever became legal, he would do it as part of his family practice. And by the time that I got on the scene, he was so inundated with requests for abortion services that he needed help. And he saw that I had been trained, so we hooked up. It has never been a doubt in my mind how important this is. And when I wrote the letter to the newspaper, I said, rightly so, abortion is a very simple, safe medical procedure. It's And um, it saves women lives because we know that women will always seek abortion services and there is absolutely no reason why women should die from it. And it's so clear to me because life is hard and, and families and women need choices in their lives and reproduction is like key to being able to make choices in your life. So, Susan Cahill, you are a physician's assistant and the law that the Montana legislature passed was Directed target, directly targeting you, saying a physician's assistant cannot perform abortion, but then was overturned by the Montana Supreme Court for a couple of years later? Correct. What happens is that when abortion became legal, the Roe v. Wade said only medical, uh, uh, only doctors, trained physicians could do abortions, which was in response to, to the illegal people that were doing abortions before Roe. So, and there weren't a lot of uh, allied health professionals at that time. We were just starting out allied professionals, meaning physician assistants and nurse practitioners, particularly. And so there weren't those, so you weren't going to add them. So then when they were trying to stop me from doing them, they went to that law. And it took two years for the Montana Supreme Court to say, you know, that's not what the law was intended to mean. It meant that people who were trained and skilled should should be able to do this procedure. So that's why it was overturned. Uh, Susan, I wanted to play a clip of one of your former colleagues, uh, Dr. Susan Wickland, who recently closed her clinic in Livingston, Montana. She's the author of This Common Secret, My Journey as an Abortion Doctor. In 2009, during a talk at Revolution Books here in New York City, Susan Wickland described how a shortage of rural abortion providers compelled her to travel to five clinics across three states, Wisconsin, North Dakota and Minnesota, to provide abortions. And then anti-choice groups figured out what she was doing. She describes how they came to her house in northern Minnesota and formed a blockade out of cement barrels. The day that they had put cement barrels in the yard and to try to keep me from going to the clinic, which is the same day that I snuck out of the house carrying a loaded 45, which is the same day I drove, you know, all night long to get to the clinic in Fargo, and then that morning showed up at the clinic, and the protesters, of course, thought I was barricaded in my house because their buddies, 260 miles away, of course, were holding me captive, and they were quite shocked when, for the first time ever, I, I stepped out of that clinic with my scrubs on and my lab coat, and I put my fist in the, in the air, and I said, yes, there will be clinic today. You are not going to stop this clinic. And it was... Uh, Dr. Susan Wickland, she went on to describe how the anti-choice extremists went to her daughter's school and put up posters bearing her Susan's face with the words, wanted for the murder of children. Susan Cahill, your response? I know Susan Wickland very well. Um, my response is, I, it's painful, but not surprising. 
And this is why it's getting harder and harder for, um, for us as abortion providers to offer that service because it's nonstop. And I don't, I don't know what to say about that other than I just wish that everybody would be, would say this can't go on. This, we, this is a, a safe, legal medical procedure and it's the only medical procedure that is allowed to be um, demonized continually and the people who do them to be demonized continually. And I, I and it wears you down. Susan Cahill, is the FBI looking at this as terrorism? I, I don't think that they are looking at it as terrorism. Um, but they're quiet about what they're doing. So I have to respect that. I felt that they've been very supportive. So I just have to respect that. I don't know. I wanted to ask you about the Hope Pregnancy Ministries. The Montana Human Rights Network has accused Hope uh, Pregnancy Ministries of receiving support from white supremacists. It cites a, a post by a local resident, April uh, uh, Gaiety, on the neo-Nazi site Stormfront in 2009. Uh, Gaiety wrote, quote, if you want to do something to help save white babies, please donate to this group. I have personally met many of these people, and they are some of the most devoted to saving the unborn that I have ever met. Since our local population is over 95 percent white, you're pretty much guaranteed to be helping to save white babies. Uh, Michelle Reimer, the di executive director of, of uh, Hope Pregnancy Ministries, denied the link in a statement to Democracy Now! She wrote, we have no record of Ms. Gaiety ever making a donation to Hope Pregnancy Ministries. Did you want me to comment? Yeah, on Susan, that? If you, uh, uh, about this, uh, uh, this, al or at least this uh, supposed link between uh, Hope uh, uh, Pregnancy Ministries and a white supremacist uh, site. Well, again, um, I. It doesn't surprise me, and from what I know about that, and it's only secondhand, um, is that once it came out and the and the Human Rights Network pushed it. Uh, Hope Ministries backed off and said, no, we don't want a connection with them. Um, just like they're now saying, you know, we abhor this violence to my clinic. I mean, they're going to say that. It doesn't make them look very good. They want to look like they're just these nice little people that are trying to save babies. And I think that they're very dangerous people. Zachary Clunt, what kind of weapons did he have when he went into your office, into your clinic? I don't know that either, um, but uh, all I know is that what was reported, which was that he had on his person, you know, I don't even know about arms, except that he had an automatic, semi-automatic rifle in his car, and he had a semi-automatic, I think, pistol on his person with an extra round. And I would venture to guess that they were with him at the time, but I'm not sure of that. Are you, um, are you concerned about your own personal safety? Um, I absolutely believe that this man—this is what I think happened. The Rhymers bought my office, um, hoping that that would stop me from, from having a business, because it's not easy for me to find a place to rent. Um, it took me a long time to find the place on Meridian Road. and um, But I did find one, and so I think that that— pissed off, pardon me, um, the uh, Hope Pregnancy Ministries, and so they destroyed it. They decided to destroy my office. And my feeling is that if that had not been successful, because of the incredible violence and hatred that was palpable in my office, I think that they would have destroyed me. That's how I feel. So, yes, I am nervous about that. And uh, what is your plans now for the future? What's been the reaction in the uh, in your community to the attack? And are you uh, planning to seek to try to reopen again? This has been probably the most dramatic um, uh, situation of my life so far, which is saying a lot, considering I've gone through a fair amount. But this has been big. And, um, and it feels bigger because it was an attack on me personally from somebody else in the community. And our firebombing in 1994 was from a man from, I think he was from Texas, and he had done it to three clinics. Um, 
So I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, I haven't made any decisions and I'm taking the summer off. My, my phone lines are open, my faxes are open, I talk to patients. I have mostly my patients are regular patients and try and help them with whatever they need, including referrals. And I'm not making any commitment to anything until I really think deeply about this. Susan Cahill, I wanted to um, end by asking you to tell the story behind the painting that was destroyed in your office. It's the Norman Rockwell painting, Golden Rule, which bears that text, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. The glass broken, the painting slashed. What's the history of this painting, where you first got it and where else yeah. it's hung over the years? Yeah, it's a it's a good story. Dr. Armstrong and I were at a, a meeting, uh, National Abortion Federation meeting in Philadelphia, and we went to the Norman Rockwell Museum. And it it's a small it's an interesting museum, and it goes around in a circle. And we kind of both went in opposite directions to come back to the sales desk. And when we got there, Dr. Armstrong was there already, and I came up and I said to him, I think that we ought to get the golden rule for our office. And he looked at me and he just pointed to the salesperson because she was wrapping it at the time. Mm -hmm. So um, we bought that together and it was being framed when we had our firebomb in our office. So when we rebuilt, which took five months, that was the first um, thing that went up in our office in the waiting room. And it stayed there forever. And then when Dr. Armstrong retired and I opened up um, all families health care, he gave it to me to put in my office. And that was the painting that was destroyed on March 4th. Correct. Susan Cahill, I want to thank you for being with us, owner of All Families Healthcare, one of four facilities in Montana that provide abortion. Her clinic was destroyed March 4th. Another clinic where she previously worked was firebombed in 1994. The following year, the Montana State Legislature passed a bill that became known as the Susan Cahill Law to ban physicians' assistance from providing abortion, but the Montana Supreme Court eventually upheld her right to practice abortion, which she has been doing as part of family health care for 38 years. A campaign to raise funds for uh, her after the attack has raised more than $62,000 at the uh, website Indiegogo. Uh, Susan Cahill, all the best to you. Please be safe. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. When we come back, uh, we will be joined by the